so I, I left you with a couple things, right? Three T's. I mean, think about those three T's. About mindset, about finding what's in your way and getting through it. Right? There's no way you can go from state from state qualifier to state champ in an hour. Right? We all know that. Probably not in two hours. Three is a four hours, but six months. Six months. Now we're starting to think maybe we can jumble up. I was JV this year. Uh, I won 18 matches this year. Uh, I won three matches this year. I want to win 10 next year. Uh, I want. This could take a lot of work. Right? There's no, there's no magic thing. I just want you to take some concepts with you. How many guys train at a compound? Yeah. Okay, we're, we're both of you guys from Florida here. You guys, are good. It's really good basics here. I mean, with this group, with your learning capacity, you guys know how to wrestle. We could, we could get, we could get a lot done. We got, we got, we got an hour. Three T's. I share with you. Three things you have to be able to do. Watch. Set up the start. To be great on your feet, you'll see some stuff like this. That you really elite guys, right? They'll do something like this, right? Now they'll they'll take this drag and they'll just take it and make it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, right? They drag it. They feel they don't have it because the guy steps away, and they do this, right? And they hit the bullseye every single time. Their forehead is right in the crook of the knee. It's not through. That it's not good. Their forearms flat on the mat on the other side. They're posting here. Their foot's up. And they drive them down beautifully. We gotta be able to get this side. So this is on you. You guys are you guys are blessed. You got the internet. When I was a kid growing up, there was no internet. There were no cell phones. There was one phone in my house. It was in the center of the kitchen. And had a really long. I would stretch that cord as far as I could to try to talk to my friends. Hey, what's going on? I couldn't hide in my room my cell phone and talk. No internet, I couldn't watch any wrestling. Once a year I could watch the Nationals on TV, but I had a buddy that got me a tape on Arsene Fadzaya, this rest Russian I love. I fell in love with him, I still do. I watch him all the time. You can watch him, you can Google his name, Arsene Fadzaya. You can watch Kyle Snyder, John Smith. You can watch the best in the world. You can learn from them, that's why we're so good right now. That's why America is one of the best countries in the world now. So many learning opportunities, there's no reason for you to not know it. So I tell my guys this, you better be the expert. Don't count on me to be the expert. You run your life. Mommy ain't running your life. Daddy ain't running your life. You're running it. Yes? You set the alarm clock. You make your lunch. You do your laundry. You clean your room. You clean up when your friends leave the house. Yes? Learn that early. You are, you are in charge of your wrestling your life. So I'm gonna leave you guys with this thing. So, you gotta really go right. One side, this side, this side, and a front helmet. All right, sit down. Here's what I got for you. I'll leave you with this. I love wrestling. Changed my life. Started wrestling in seventh grade. You know why? Because I got caught from the basketball team. You know how mad I was? I was mad. I was upset. I went home crying. I said, <laughs> I thought it was really good. I remember I was yesterday. I scored 12 points a game. Second grade to sixth grade. See why I basketball. Loved it. Seventh grade came around. Three middle schools joined together. There were more kids. There were like 20 kids trying out. 11 kids made it. Here's what I do. I show up for school. I know I made the team. I'm sweet. I look on the wall. This is what he did when I was a kid. I looked in the locker room wall. Look for the name. My name wasn't there. I was coming. Coming. Guess what I did? First, I didn't have a cell phone to call my mother. I might have. There was a pay phone down the hallway at the front of the school, and I didn't have a quarter. So I went into the coach's office, and I just represented myself. What did I say? You, what did the guy say? No! <laughs> it's funny. No! I said, I said, that's great. I said, I said, my name is not on the wall. I said, Mr. O'Leary. I remember his name. I love Mr. O'Leary. I can see the whistle around his neck. I said, where's, where's my name? He said, uh, I need you to make a team. Is there anything I can do? No. You need to make a team. You should try to wrestle. I was kind of aggressive. I babble. Hmm. He goes, try to wrestle. So I go home that night at the dinner table. My brother just started wrestling. And I said, you're going to wrestle. I said, no, I'm not. You're going to wrestle. No, I'm not. You're talking to the head coach at Ohio State talking to you right now. Wrestling? He's like, you're out. I'm like, no way. Why not? I'm not wearing a sink. No way. I'm not wearing a sink. You guys are. I'm not wearing that. You're going to wrestle. No, I'm not. Finally. He goes, you, you wear shorts and a t-shirt in practice. I go, oh, really? All right, I'll give it a try. First day in the room, guess what I did? 
I fell in love. I, not even a single. I fell in love with it. I loved it. So here's what happens. Seventh grade, eighth, I keep getting better and better and better. I'm starting to do pretty well. And I get offered a scholarship to college. And I go to college. I accepted a full scholarship at, the, at Syracuse University. Two years later, my, my brother and I were roommates. I left. I walked on an aisle and changed my life. I, 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 I understood suffering. I understood suffering. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the camps I went to. I just suffered. I, I, understood, I connected. I, I'd suffer a lot, and I'd come home from camp, and my dad would say, you want to go back next year? What would I say? No! No! And the season would come around. And I got way better. And all the guys who were beating me, I was now beating. So what, what, when the summer came around, what did they say to my dad? I got to go back. So I went back, and I got better. But wrestling was my God. Wrestling was, was so important to me. It still is. But it's not my God anymore. There's two types of suffering. I'm challenging you to constantly find pain. Sometimes it's physical, but, but chase it. Because you only grow when you're under duress. If you have an easy practice, listen, some practices are designed to be easy, but some aren't. And when they're not, you better dig, you better dig deep. And the more you suffer, the more you're gonna grow. It's just a fact. I know, I know nobody that's up here that hasn't suffered a lot. So connect that. Second thing is unchosen suffering. Does anybody know me personally? Does anybody know my life story? I shared some with you. Some of you know? 2000, February 16, 2004, I was the head coach at Hofstra. I'm at dinner with my family, four kids. Life's great. And while at dinner, my, my youngest son, T, who was five at the time, falls over and dies from a massive heart attack at the dinner table. He was healthy. He was at practice with me all day. It was President's Day. It was February 16, 2000, President's Day. We spent the whole day together, me and my four kids. There was no school on President's Day. It was Monday. And he falls over. And we rush into the hospital. My kids stay at the house. And we get to the hospital. And I call my, my brother. And I said, I don't know what happened. Teague fell over at the hospital. Meet me there. The whole family gathers. About two hours go by. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're in. The surgeon comes out. And he says, we're sorry. I drive home from the hospital. I get to the front door. Guess who's at the front door? Teague's three, two older brothers and a sister. So don't miss this. If I'm putting you to sleep, don't miss this. If there's anything I said today, make this the thing that you hear the loudest and the most clear. I get up to my house, I open the front door, I didn't open the front door, my, my car pulled in, my kids, when you're little, you're at the front door when your dad comes home. That's just the way it is. Or mom. When you're older, you're out the back door. <laughs> what you know is the front door. Where were they? Front door. Teague was, eight, uh, Teague was five, Jake was eight. Jake is getting married this week. Uh, a couple weeks, September 1 is getting married. Graduate from Ohio State University. My older son at the time was 11. He graduated from Ohio State. But at the time, he was eight years old. And I get to the front door, and I open the door, and what did he ask me? What? Yeah, where is T? Pretty logical question, yeah? It's amazing what happens when we use common sense and ask the right questions in life. Ask the right questions. He said, where is he? What do you think I said? I'm gonna tell you something, I was 36 years old. I was a grown man. I was leading people, I was coaching a team, my team was doing well, life was good. I had a pool in the backyard, I had air conditioning. I had a car, my wife had a car. Life was good, everyone was healthy. He said, where is he? I didn't know. I didn't know. But I'll tell you what I did know. I knew every guy on my team what their tendencies were. I knew every recruit in the country, or the ones at least who would impact our program. There's a lot of things I could tell you, but I couldn't tell you where it was. So guess what became my priceless? You got a priceless? I'll tell you, you all got a priceless. Here's the deal, if I taped your mouth shut, which most men aren't very good at, being quiet, right? When you get married, you'll learn this. <laughs> if you just shut up, life will be way better. Um, the older I get, the better I'm getting at. If I taped your mouth shut, and I followed you around for one month, what would I learn? 
I'd learn what your price list is. I would learn what is most valued in your life. So for me, if someone followed me around, they would have said, my children and rest. What's your price list? What do you stand for? Who are you? You think you're invincible. You're not. I did too. Don't get me wrong. So here's what happens. I get a vision correction. My life's going to change greatly. Because here's what happened. I quieted the world and I considered what? I considered where he was. Where is he? That meant that single question transformed my life. What is the meaning of life? How did I get here? Why am I here? I'm going to share two options with you. And I've talked all over the country. And no one's come up with a different option. There's only two. There's only two. And the quicker you make a decision, the better. You don't get to look and then not choose. Anybody here want a new pair of wrestling shoes? Your shoes are ripped, you don't have any for the season? You need a new pair of wrestling shoes. You don't shop around and not buy, right? At some point, you gotta what? You gotta make a decision. You got enough information. The Snyder is a little, it loses a little better traction. The Burroughs has a little this, it's white, and look, this one has this, and this one is that. You, you, you get all the data, and then you what? You choose. So guess what I did? I got so much data, guys. I consider the only two options that are out there. One option is true. One option is not true. In the wrestling suit shoe scenario, they're both nice. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. In this one, you can. Because one's true and one's not. Are you with me so far? I'll beat it up more. What's your name? Tyler. Tyler and I wrestle for an hour. I leave the room, I go, hey, wrestle this kid, Tyler. Good looking stud, big traps, forearms are popping out, nice black socks, looks good, beat him 100 nothing. My wife goes, oh, that's great, it's a high school kid. Oh. Tyler goes home, gets, gets out of here, calls his mom, hey, wrestle Coach Ryan. Talks a lot, I beat him 100 nothing. What happened? What? Yes, yes. Tyler. Someone had to lie. So here's my point. You have two options. You get to decide. You will not be forced. You will not be forced to decide. You could be, but you aren't. So option one is that you are here, and I weighed this by chance. You're here by chance. That a billion years ago, something exploded, and over the course of time, it, 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 it went from uh, something in the water that was one cell, and it split, and it split, it kept splitting, and then eventually, the first human being was formed. That's one option. I'm not telling you that that's. That's right or wrong, but I'm just posing it to you this way. Okay, the other option is a polar opposite to that. One, what I did, my price became finding out why I was here and where he was, so I took a piece of paper, I put a line down the middle, I put chance on this side, and what I put on this side? God! Dudes, listen, on this piece of the paper is chance. On this side of the paper, God, I'm not trying to impose on you. I'm just trying to expose your mind to something that you have to come to terms with. You, it's one or the other. So I studied it. I learned about it. Here's what I did. I know some things. Oh, God, yo, yeah. I started writing stuff down. How can let this happen? Tsunami. 250,000 people dead. There's a God in that. Lots of reasons on this side. I got every DVD on evolution, wrote them all down, all this stuff. Then on the God side, Jesus Christ said he came. He said who he was. How could every person have their own fingerprint? Exactly a different, every person ever walked on earth has a unique fingerprint. No two have been the same. Every hair on your head says he knows. How could something that looks like this happen by chance? 
This building is a hunk of junk compared to you. It's a hunk of junk. The space shuttle, garbage. Tesla, garbage. Dell Computer, Microsoft, and garbage compared to you. But those had a maker and you didn't. And I didn't. I'm the fanciest thing on earth. <laughs> the fanciest thing on earth. And I'm the same as you. We're fancy. We're made incredibly well, man. There's so many things going on in us right now. So fancy. Hey, it's one or the other. I challenge you. I tell you what. Who, anybody on Twitter? All right, Instagram? I'll tell you this. If I'm recruiting you, I follow you. And I look at who you follow. Follow Kyle Snyder. Who follows him? Good. Who follows him on Twitter? Instagram. Follow him. If you're, on, if you're online, follow him. You'll see what he posts. Intentional. His mind is amazing. The only thing he can, the only thing he can produce is fruit. Because it's the only thing he allows in. When someone tells you not good enough, don't listen. You don't have to listen. But you will, like I did. Some guys told me you'll, you'll be a good Division III college person. Remember it. What? I'm not listening to you. I don't need to hear that nonsense. It'll be a constant battle, right? There's a constant battle up here. You guys are special. You're brave. You're human beings. You're the fanciest thing on earth. God bless you guys. Good luck to you guys. Go Bucks. No. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> it's the best. Okay. So again, Tom Ryan, you guys, it's uh, you guys are a, a, you know special group, and and we're just glad you're here. So Tom, thank you so much for yeah. being here. And right, uh, thanks, and if you need anything, um, and I'm sure guys, if you need anything. He's a good man to talk to and a good man to follow. So uh, let's get it in on, on Coach Ryan. You can do the Go Bucks if you want. That's a good thing. They already, they already tried to do the Go Cyclones earlier, so you got to do this. Please tell me to do the Go Cyclones. One, two, three. Oh, he didn't go.